This week, Quest means business. We are looking at the role of technology in fighting human trafficking. It's part of our Freedom Project. We shine the light on the horrors of modern-day slavery without fear or favour. Now, today, we're going to look at how the smartphone can help you take a stand. Join me at the super screen, and you'll see what I mean. All right. <clears throat> Forget just tweeting about where you are or Facebooking about your friends or any of that nonsense. The call and response app complements the anti-slavery film of the same name, Call Response. It allows you to read stories by freed slaves and share your own experiences with others. Now, trafficking persons awareness, this will give you, trafficking persons awareness will give you an aware and a crash course in spotting and helping to prevent human trafficking. Plenty more. The R Day app helps users coordinate flash mobs, concerts, and protests on Redemption Day, the 11th of November. That's a plague pegged to be the global day to make a shout out against slavery. You can guarantee that we'll have extensive coverage there. And free to work. We talked about this last night. Let's you look up major brands as you shop to check what they're doing to tackle the problem. These are real live apps and real live technologies that we can use every day, which of course you'll find on our website, to actually make a stand, to make a difference. Now, Free to Work was created by the Not For Sale campaign. Its goal is to use technology to mobilize activists and fight slavery. David Batstone is the campaign's co-founder and president. He joins me from San Francisco. Um, we now, over the, the months that we've had the Freedom Project, we've got a very good idea of the issues. We know the awfulness, but David, it's doing something about it that I need you to talk to me about, not telling me how dreadful it is. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly our, our mission, uh, Richard, is to mobilize smart activists. There's a lot of dumb activism out there, frankly, and what can I really do that makes an impact? What can I do so, that makes a change? And so. We use technology and business to bring about solutions. OK. When you talk about that, the technology, give me an idea of the range, short of telling me what, you know, a, a product or something that might work or might not, what can technology really do? Well, it can do a lot of things. One is um, when um, your listeners shop, w whether it's in a large department store or whether they are out at the grocery store, that they're able to take their smartphone through Free to Work, our app, and they're able to uh, look at the products. And what's the story behind those uh, uh, products? What, how were they made? Where were they made? How were people treated? Uh, were they actually free to work? Um, you see, none of us want to wear people's tragedy. We don't want to consume their suffering when we have coffee with sugar poured in it. We want to make sure that people's lives are enhanced. And this tool enables you to buy in such a way that you know you're enhancing the lives of the people who made those products. Okay. This assumes that there's, there's two problems, aren't there, in all of this. Firstly, you've got to ensure that people care enough to want to do anything about it, which is, a, I suppose, a sine qua non <laughs> of the whole thing to begin with. But even then, you've got to raise your app and your technology above the clutter, haven't you? No, you really do. And I'd say, first off, that really, you know, we need one out of five people who are watching the show to download the app. You know, the other four can be losers, Richard, really. We just need one out of five to say, I care about the way that the products that I use are made. So one is to mobilize that very active minority. And that makes a difference to a company. We don't need to get five out of five people. Right. But still, we have to raise it above the clutter. That's why we make partnerships with major global brands who start to care about the way their own products were made, and they show the way forward and how you can actually make a difference in production and change the way that people work. On the wider point of preventing and, and ridding slavery, is there not a, a fact that, frankly, you, you and me, we all have to accept we may have to pay more to ensure a product that mm. is secure, safe, and, has, uh, uh, and does not transgress? Well, to the extent to which we have to make sure that everyone's lives really are protected in the making of that, yeah, it would be 
more than actually using a product or buying a product where people are forced to work. But really, we're talking about a very small margin, Richard. And this is what I've tried to tell companies that we're not, you know, sometimes people say, gee, it's going to cost $200 to buy a hamburger if we actually pay people what they deserve. But, you know, really, it's about 10 to 20 to 30 cents on a product. And I think all of us are willing to pay that just so that we can live in a world of dignity. I think that's a, not enough for us to try to ignore the fact that uh, we are linked to people around the world through consumer uh, products. All right. David, thank you. You just want one out of five to download Free to Work. All right. I just want one out of five. One out of five. All and right. then you get a company, Richard, All like... Right. Yeah, but I, you, know, you get a company like All Saints in London, a global company. In two weeks at Fashion Week, they're creating their own not-for-sale line of apparel where you know when you buy a shirt that that was made where people had dignity, you're going to look stylish, right. and it helps our cause to fight slavery. So those kinds of things are great.